Jim has served as a past vice president and CFO at Excel Energy, as well as CFO at the company's predecessor, Norton State Power. He is also past president and chief executive officer of Northern State Power, Wisconsin, and served on the Altertail Corporation Board of Directors for the past five years. In his leadership, Jim brings his practical, responsible, conservative approach to achieving results. Please welcome our special guest, Jim McIntyre. Thank you, Yasek. It is indeed my honor to be here with you today. It, it brings back all the this wonderful memories I have of this campus and, and all the people that are affiliated with it. So I'm really glad to be here to, to uh, be able to share a little bit of my experience and perhaps shape some thoughts for each of you as you embark on your careers. I wanted to tell you just a little bit about, about my journey uh, from my days here at Minot State in the late 60s and early 70s and, and how the opportunity to speak with you occurred. Um, first of all, uh, I met some of the good things. I'll just run these off and then provide a little more detail. I met my wife of almost 42 years here, so I mean that's pretty significant, you know. I, uh, I had my first career job in February 1973, coming out into the Vietnam War days, and those of us that may be old enough to remember, there weren't a lot of jobs available back then. And our first son was born here, and my first boss was a good one. So when you put together the university, all these experiences, it's pretty hard to not have a really favorable impression of Minot State and Minot. Let me, let me just take a little more time to, to walk, walk through some of these a little bit. Um, you know, life is somewhat serendipitous. A and so that has always humbled me because I'm not unlike any of you when I was a student here a long time ago. And that I happened to meet my wife who was in the band. Uh, my roommate at the time, both he and I were playing football, was going with a woman from Williston who was also in the band. So I met my wife through my roommate's girlfriend. Uh, you know, how, how serendipitous is that? So after her freshman year, her dad ended up with a different job. He was working for uh, the refinery in Mandan and he got transferred down to Chocolate Bayou Plant in, in Alvin, Texas. So after the freshman year, she went down to Sam Houston State. And I saw somebody with a NDSU sweatshirt on here someplace. You may recognize that Sam Houston State has played the Bison a number of times, never come quite out on the, on the winning end. Um, so that's that. Uh, I have to say one thing came out of that. It helped keep me on the straight and narrow while I was at school. I'm probably one of the few male students that went to Minot State that can legitimately say I spent more on long distance phone calls than I did on beer. <laughs> <coughs> I, uh, I, had my, I got my first job in, in, in February 73. I took overloads in my last two years because um, I wanted to get married. And back then it was kind of an order to things. It was go to school, graduate, get a job, get married, and start a family. Now any of that order or some part of that order is all that's necessary to do any or all of those things. But getting a job was important because I wanted to get married. So I took overloads and uh, about that point in time, some guy from Northern States Power decided to take early retirement. And so they were going to fill the job at the bottom end. And I think there were 16 of us that responded to the posting that was in the, in the office here on campus. And a total of about 30 people that applied for that job. I don't know how, but I found my way through all of those applicants and, and I was given the job. Tell you, I did not know a single thing about Northern States Power Company. I was very pleased to get the job and the salary. They're going to start your careers pretty quickly. The good news is the salaries are a lot better. My is annually. So things have changed and hopefully for the better. Less, it was a great job that, that Minot State and its faculty taught me how to learn. And learning is the most significant thing that can be done in college. When you get out and you get into your careers, most of what you've learned, I hate to tell you this, will be obsolete. But if the university has done its job and, and as is apt for the slot and learning center, you've learned how to learn, that will stay with you throughout your life. That will enable you to renew yourself and to change yourself and become the most you can be, hopefully in an organization that values people as an asset and not as a commodity. So. 
there's a thing to think about. L learning is important, and I think Minor State will have done a, well, a good job by all of you. Um, another point, and, and that is this. Uh, we think, at Ottertail, we think of all employees as leaders. You say, how can that be? You know, they don't have a leader title. Well, first off, every employee is responsible for his or her work product. And as you think about when you get out in the workforce, if you can be responsible for doing a good job on your work product, that's part of being a leader. The other part is to help your team be more successful. If you can figure out a better way to do the work you're doing, figure out a better way for the team to cover all the things they have to cover, now you're truly a leader. And we expect and believe that our people are capable of doing that. Get what you, get what you encourage people to do. And I have to say, we're seeing from all 2,400 employees at Ottertail Corporation. The, uh, with our culture that we care for another one another and we support each other. Um, I want to go back to my NSP Wisconsin days. Uh, Yasik mentioned that I was president of NSP Wisconsin. and While I was there, we, we wanted to put in place um, a, a process by, by which an office of creativity to get people to bring both forth their, their best and highest creative ideas. And, and like all businesses, we, we struggled with the budget part of funding this, this new office. So we, were, we, we wanted to do it, but we were debating on it. So I get this call from Tom. Tom says, can I come over and see you? So Tom comes over and he says, I, I got this idea. I really, really want to be the manager of creativity. And he had a lot of, he'd done a lot of work on it, et cetera, et cetera. And he was really engaged and infused. And here's his deal. He said, Jim, if you let me do this, I will do this job by day, and I'll do my regular job by night. The thing is, his day job was to read meters. So he was going to read his meters at night, do the Office of Creativity during the day. He'd do one job for free, and the other one would still be the Office of Creativity basically going forward. I told him, Tom, you got the job. You're the manager of creativity, but you're not going to read your meters. That's going to be somebody else's role. So the point is, you get somebody that's that impassioned about doing it, you've got to find a way to fund it. You've got to find it a way. To, to turn it loose and to help the organization move forward. Two years later, NSP Wisconsin won an award for the most value-based ideas and suggestions for a company of its size, and they had roughly 800 employees at the time. So, I mean, you, you can find ways to get things uh, moving in the organization when everybody believes in it and, and moves it forward. Um, um, you know, as far as leadership, um, I, I've had the opportunity to work on both ends. Uh, kind of malfunctioning senior teams and high-performing teams. And the high-performing teams will always put uh, their, their egos outside and they, they tend to think about in advance what's best for the corporation, how can we make that work? And when you get to the end of where you're working as a high-performing team, the results are so much easier and so much more rewarding. And that's another reason why leadership is so important that everyone carries out their role. Um, the uh, last one here, is, is before I go on, is Kaizen. Anybody familiar with Kaizen? It, it's, it's a really good thing. I mean, Kaizen in Japanese is, is, is two words, good. And, 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 and what I love about it is every employee to be engaged with their team better. We've got a number of plants, not just for them. Kaizen works just as well in the office as it does out in the manufacturing plants. But you get the people that are doing the work and what they can do to help and how they can be part of a winning team. And all of us want to be part of a winning team. So that's a really, really helpful part. I used to say, without any tend to be negative towards any, you know, the hands and employees, we get the heart and the brains for margins. One of these pumps a week has some of this one. Mission. And, and after, you'll see our stuff, it, it kind of can help to portray what I'm, I'm trying to portray with you. So with that. We call it, I call it the Otter Tail Pillars of Excellence. You start down at the bottom, which basically is mission, vision, values. And this is kind of the glue that holds the culture together. Who we are, what we are, how we're going to operate, how we're going to treat each other. And, and that's all good stuff. So then on top of that, you have governance. We've got the executive team, we've got the Otter Tail Corporation Board, and we have two subsidiary boards, one for the utility and one for our, our, our non-utility businesses. On top of that, you have corporate strategy. And here we've got our three significant components, operational initiatives that will lead us towards that. So now there's, there's the management systems in place, and these are represented by these pillars. I mean, alignment. So we have, that's one of the ways we communicate, is to make sure we've got alignment from top to bottom, from all the businesses through all these different entities. 
operations. There's operational systems, and I'm not talking about computer systems, but rather the, the ways in which you figure out where the levers are within your business and you put operational systems in place to keep your, say, quality within the, con the conformance that you want it to be. And the way in which you uh, develop sales so that you have a consistent ability to create the sales that you need over a period of time. So there's, there's various processes that are around those that people know and use that make it a way them that you get into to do your business time in, time out. Compensation is another system so that people believe that they're being fairly paid for what they contribute. And they don't have compensation. We value you as employees and assets of the company. We want it to develop or expanding. And, and look at, the, they probably have their mission and value, vision values on their website as well. Go look at that. And, and so you get a sense of who, what that company's like, you know. And you probably can even, perhaps some of them have some place you can either call or talk to or whatever. I, I would do all that exploratory work on the front end. So you're more intentional about who you're for. So you know a little bit about them, questions to ask. I can tell you this, that, that we just went through uh, hiring a fairly senior guy. They'll think that you're trying to take care of yourself and get yourself well positioned. So do your research and kind of scope out. And there's another thing I'll talk about too, and that is to try to find a job that lends itself to a career when, with which you're passionate. You know, I'm very fortunate. Between the, the NSP and the Otter Tail piece, I don't know how many years I got there, more than I can even count, but more than 98% of all that time, my job was also my passion, it was also my hobby, and there's nothing that I would rather have been doing than my work. Uh, and that's a good thing, if you can find it. I mean, I know that's somewhat utopian, but at the same time, it, I know people that are somewhat like that. So try to find something you like so it won't just be a paycheck. If it's just a paycheck, the job is going to become work. The job shouldn't become work. It really should be a passion and something you get some enjoyment out of besides just going up and collecting a paycheck every two weeks. Sure. I have a question. Um, how does someone, for example, I'm a junior, um, out of minor state, find the job at the top 10 companies, investment, let's say, like, uh, Morgan Stanley turned down about 37,000 uh, intern applicants last year, and Goldman Sachs about 20,000. Uh, they hire on average about 1,000 interns every summer. How do we get into that flow without being you know, the top 10 Ivy League schools? Or, you know? Well, there's several sub questions around that. I mean, all those firms you mentioned based. You know, over my career, particularly as CFO, I, I got to know a lot of those firms well. I mean, that's a meat grinder. They get you in there, you will work extremely hard, and, and, and there will be very intentional moving in. There's 800 going out within the first 12 to 18 months. There's 200 left, and of that 200, it might be 100 that stay with any of those firms, because they sort it out because they've got such high competition for those jobs. And the hours that those guys work and the grind they have is very, very significant. So, I mean, if, you, if that's what you want, just go to New York. That's kind of what you're going to have. Now, having said that, there are other analytical and investment advice when you still have a life. So, I mean, if I were to, you know, if I were to, if I, I've, we have three boys. And, and, and one of them did consulting for four or five years. And he was all over the place. It worked for him because he ended up getting back in a job, but he had to get out of what he was doing because it was, it was a grind. Uh, but, but so if you want to do that, um, boy. How do you get the door and put, you know, without, you know, yeah. as much as exposure? We don't have recruiters on campus. Yeah, yeah. Um, Is this something magical you put on the resume that they just notice? Yeah, I mean, I don't know about magical, but I mean, I mean, you, you could, you could always. I mean, uh, I peppered when I was coming out of here. I peppered. I mean, I don't know how many resumes I put out. You know, I mean, and you get used to rejection. You know, like I say, I got the one, I got the one from the IRS, and I ended up with a job here. And out of all the stuff I got out, that's the only two jobs I had at the time. But I, I put that out there, and then I'd also look at some regional ones. You know, like Baird, for example, in this research I talked about. Baird out of Milwaukee has stuff. There's people out of Minneapolis that have things. So there's more regional ones. And I would, from a standpoint of working your way in, if you were to work your way in, I'd start from the outside and work your way in rather than starting the inside and try to work out. I mean, New York is a tough place because you're going against guys. I mean, you're going against a lot of people that have been in... In, in, in paid kindergarten, okay? 
where they pay a lot to get to kindergarten, then they go through private, private high school, then they go to private college, then they go to grad school, and now they're entering into, in, into those big, big bracket groups you talked about, in part because there may be somebody they know because they, they live in that community and they have butt, are, butt heads with, or butt, have back-to-back -back relationships with some of those folks. I mean, I'm not saying it's a, part of it is who you know, I mean, a little bit, just to get introduced and get the doors open. Um, if we get done here, we can talk a little bit. Maybe I can have some thoughts for you as well. Uh, I got, there's another book over there. Who else had a question? Okay, you had one. Okay, so uh, pass this down if you would, please. That's an easy call. Go for the knowledge. Go for the knowledge. I mean, um, one of the things that, that always helped me, I always, I mean, first off, without, I, mean, I don't know how to best put this. The only job I ever applied for all the time in my career was the one here in Minot. Every other job I had, they moved me because of what I could do from what I learned in my past job and they thought that I was the best one to do whatever job was open and necessary to be done by the corporation. I used to tell my wife, okay, I got this new job. Give me 12 to 18 months. I'll get my arms wrapped around it. We'll be here for a while. She said, no, that won't happen. She was more right than I was. So we got moved and moved again over time. My point is, knowledge is really, really important. The money, if you get the knowledge, you get the base, the money will come. Plus, the money should not be the end. What should be is with a passion, what you want to do, what will draw, you'll drive energy from and enjoyment from. So that when you're trying to, you got to balance your life. I mean, you always have to have some balance. I mean, uh, there, there's work, there's family, and there's personal. What I did is I shrunk the personal piece because I got so much satisfaction out of work. But I kept my family piece important so that I could still be a good father, good husband, and, and, and all that, that part of it. So you always got to keep that, but I shrunk the personal part of it because I got, I got that satisfaction from work. I, I'm less academic based than some. I, I, I would be intrigued by what else you've done. Have you actually worked, you know? Or have you always just been in the academic side, you know? I mean, so if you've worked for somebody that even if it's out of your field, but someplace that's demanding, I mean, I, I'm drawing back to, my, my dad was a small, had a small plumbing heating business and he only had eighth grade education. But one of his sayings were, when you're working, you're working, when you're on break, you're on break and people shouldn't have to ask to know the difference. So, you know, if, if, you've, if you've done some work someplace <laughs> and, and it's, it's recognized where you actually had to work, I mean, that helps me understand that you, you're someone who's gonna be willing to put in and persevere and get to the end of the road. Because there's times where we need each other and just like we trade off, there's times when you have to trade off an energy because somebody's burnt out and someone else got to step in. So follow your passion. The money will come. And if you don't get the money, passion plus enough money to live is worth a whole lot more than a lot of money, no passion, and, and, and no sense of satisfaction. Um, here's, here's a little bit what we've done. And, and what I, I, uh, I, did I, I may have already talked. I'm sorry here. Um, so this is our, our, four, our four different levels. I talked about the leading the enterprise, the front, and, and, and then going down, leading leaders, then leading others, and finally at the bottom is, is the, ever, the, the employees at large. So we still look at all of this as our, 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 our leadership and everything. And I talked about trying to find a company that will treat you as an asset. Does everybody understand what I mean by that, as opposed to a commodity? If I say, do this, do this, do this, or I'll fire you, 
what are you going to do as an employee if I were to be the one to hire you? What are you going to do? This, this, and this, right? And that's probably compliance. That's sea level work. But if I, can, if I can get on you on board as to what our plan is for whatever area I'm at, I don't have to be the CEO, what our plan is, and here's what we need to do to move the ball forward, this, 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 and this, I want you to help me, and, and you can see where we're going, and, and, and we're working on a common set of goals that are aligned towards our common success, you're more than likely to give your discretionary effort. I don't have a right to ask for your discretionary effort, but if you feel that it's worthy of doing, and that it's good for you, it's good for the company, we're all aligned in common purpose, I'll get that discretionary effort. That's your A effort. I can't ask for it, but I certainly can appreciate it. But if I'm one of these bosses that say, do this, this, or I'll fire you, or act that way, all I get is compliance, which is C-level work. C-level work is average. Average isn't going to make it. You're not going to enjoy being average in an average company. So that's, that's part of this. Find a company where you can grow, they can grow, and you feel part of that energy when the company does well, and they pat you on the back occasionally because they caught you doing something right. Um, so this is, this is kind of the way we look at it. You know, I, I've come to the conclusion over a long time that different people in the same system will produce similar results. So if we have a good talent development system, we have good operating systems, and we have a good strategy, we will then be able to move towards that together. You know, our company is not in the habit of hiring people that don't have work to do. We all have different roles, we all have different titles, but when we hired everybody, we need everybody we hire. So we need them, let's use them, let's work together, and there's plenty of room for us to feel that we got mutual success within our organization. And good companies work that way, and it's fun to be a part of that when you can put it in place and see it actually happen and occur. Um, last piece, I think, uh, and that is, you know, we're, we're trying to strive here to create an environment where everybody can do his or her personal best. And that's diversity in the biggest, broadest sense. I mean, think about how, how screwed up a company would be if everyone had a financial background, okay? We, we'd have the best books and records of the, uh, that could exist, but we probably wouldn't have any sales, maybe, you know? Or think about if you had all engineers. You could build anything, but you maybe couldn't make any money. And if you had all salespeople, I don't know, they'd have a lot of fun anyway, you know? Uh, so we need everybody. And so when I say diversity in, in the broadest sense, not just in terms of, of gender or race or whatever, and that's all part of it as well, because everyone brings a different point of view to the business based on their own experience, uh, whether it be where they live, where they grew up, et cetera, et cetera. All that's in, in very, very valuable. Just by a quick check here, how many people are left-handed in this room? Raise your hand. So one, one, one two, three, four, five, six, six. I th seven, maybe there were some half hands I couldn't decide. I don't know. Uh, <laughs> so how many in this room right here? We got probably, what, 60 people, rough numbers? So if we got six out of 60, that's 10%. You know, the average of the world is about 12%. Sometime as you go out and you go into a world where there's more executives, look around, and if you, you're conspicuous about how people are writing, these days they do more typing than writing, but more than 12% of the executives will be left-handed. And I always try to get a, le a left-handed staff person on my side because they look at the world differently. They approach problem solving differently because the world is designed originally for right-handers. So as they find problems far easier to deal with than most of us right-handed people. So again, that's diversity and everything. So I, I, you know, everybody brings something different to the plate and, and all that is, is really useful. And one of the things you'll owe your boss at some point in time, if your boss is gonna make a bad decision, you owe it as a teammate to try to get he or she to understand, have you thought about this? It may change the decision. If you sit there silent, you're not being a good team player. So anyway. Um, so um, we, we've created a, 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 an excellent portal which is available. So when you look at what, what other companies do, some place they'll probably talk about their, their talent and their people because if they really view people as important, there'll be some telltale things that'll show up in, in the way in which they go about their work. So I think uh, here's, here's kind of my summary slide on this. Um, we've already talked about, look where people are treated as an asset where you'll be, you'll be encouraged to grow your, your skills and your, your abilities. Uh, an established and growing company, oneness is not on 
hopefully not one that's it's on the economic side of, of going south because the first thing that's likely going to happen is somebody's going to get going to get cut from cut from their jobs to try to make the ends meet and provide a career an opportunity for career as well as a job the passion we took to talked about and then a, a good boss and you may not be, have the opportunity to actually interview with your boss but if you're interviewing with a company person you might get some insights as to how they supervise how they lead and how they work with their people. So uh, that's where I'm at. Uh, Yasik, we've got what, another, how much time? 40 minutes. 40 minutes, so plenty of time for questions. I don't have any more books, but what about questions? <laughs> sure. Would you be able to uh, apply that book to like anything you do in life, like for other than the business world, like applying to sports maybe, or just leadership and anything you do? Yeah, I believe that's true. I believe that's true. You know, one of the things we talk about is, uh, you know, life is so hectic these days. Uh, and, and a lot of people have things going on in their lives that they, they, they weren't totally responsible for. I mean, some of us may have handicapped children. Some of us may have one of our members of our family that has either a drug or an alcohol problem, whatever it is, you know. And to the extent that we can create an environment within the work environment where things are relatively we take the chaos out where work is an enjoyable place to be where we bring some 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 sensitivity around it and things are pretty stable to some people that may be helpful for them in their home environment because they'll, they'll have at least a part of their life that's more stable and then they kind of take some of the things that they've learned there about scheduling and getting into a rhythm and having a natural course of things that helps them in you know, whatever they they do as well um, so yeah, there's a lot of things that are applicable there. Um, just being self-accountable. I mean, I've always tried to be self-accountable. Uh, I always, always tried to ask more of myself than a boss would have a legitimate right to ask. So if I'm self-accountable, more than likely I'm going to satisfy my boss and I'm willing to be accountable for my actions. That's another thing that makes people really feel good. If you make a mistake, admit it. I mean, we're all just people. We all make mistakes, but don't, don't try to duck it or pass it off onto someone else. Live up to it. Questions, comments, somebody? You know, the, th the thing I'd leave you with is this. I mean, this is not about me. This is about all of us as people and about the ability that organizations have to do well together if they choose to. Opportunity. You're going to have opportunities as you go out and try to find your way, try to find a place that matches up with your needs and with your desires so that you can, can hopefully find uh, you know, a happy journey for you just as I was able to find one. Some of mine was just a for very... Uh, fortuitous opportunity have here, but w whatever opportunities you get, try to make the most of it and, and 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 do the best you can. And if that's what you've done, then feel good about yourself. You know. So. Sure. The hiring. Yeah. Yeah. What? What? Oh. Oh. <laughs> what? What? Was there a question or what? No. Are there opportunities for our students? Uh, there are. I mean. Uh, um, not lots. I mean, we're 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 at a point. Finally, we, we've been we've been divesting companies for quite a while, and, and so as we've been divesting, we haven't really been adding employees except for some very few strategic hires. But now I think we're getting into a regular mode. Over over, uh, we, we've got a lot of people. Not a lot of people, me, but a lot of middle-aged workers that are going to find their way out. So yeah, there's our websites out there, and it says a fair amount about about what opportunities, and we'll always post. We post our job openings both internally and externally, and, and that's another thing as far as looking for someone. Look for someone that most, the, most companies these days have internal postings. So if there is an opportunity in, 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 I'll say, Fargo for a job for XYZ Bank, it may be posted there even though they're also here. So you can get a chance to see where you might be able to hire on with someone else along the way. But our, our stuff is out there. Sure. Um, did you always have a vision uh, to like be CEO, or did that, was it all kind of serendipity for you? No, I mean, I, I, I tell you what, it was never. I, 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 the only plan I ever had was basically to, you know, put a roof over my family's head, uh, try to get my our son through college, with with appropriate support, given how expensive it's gotten, and, and more or less do the best I can be. And uh, and that was to make me happy, okay? 
but I never had, I never, I'm not one of these people that had, I want to be president of some business by the time I'm 40. I want to be CEO or I want to be CFO or whatever. I never had any of that stuff, you know. I mean, um, I never thought I was that good. I mean, I came from a small school. My, I disappointed my dad. Reason I, one of the reasons I came here is my dad wanted me to take over his plumbing heating business in Grand Forks. And if I'd have done that, I'd never finished school at UND. It'd been cut class. I would work on this project today and then cut next, next week for a week and then a semester. And I'd have never graduated. So in addition to trying to play football here, which all that wasn't all that successful, uh, I would have never, never been here except for that. And, uh, and who knows what would have happened, you know. So, so no, I, I mean, it's good to have goals as you go, but, but don't make them so much position specific, but more about what you want to do. Because there's a lot of opportunity out there where you can be happy and can feel good about yourself without regard to the title, you know. Uh, is that helpful at all? Sure. Would I do anything differently at all? Oh, wow. There's some things I wish had perhaps different outcomes, but, but I think the decisions I made at the time, I'm comfortable with them, because I, I mean, I thought I was thoughtful uh, and, and all this and all that. I maybe wished in retrospect that I would pay a little more attention to my health and my weight early on. It's harder as you get older. But, you know, when you try to, I worked a lot of hours, and I mean, I'm making excuses now, but there is some of that that fits into this thing. And, and you know, the decisions you make early on in your life have a significant implication later on, you know. So, I mean, just think about that, you know. And, and I have to say this one, I, we got time. I, I'm mentoring six, six of our executives right now. And, and so one of them is 35 years old. And uh, he would match up well with you. Okay, he's, so we're, I'm mentoring him, and he's, he's, he's the closest thing we have to a corporate economist right now. He does very, very good work on doing deep dives into research and end markets and end uses that may be a fit for our existing companies. He also does a good job at looking at macro, macroeconomic changes that could affect us and be risks that are on the, just on the edge of occurring right now, so we get that good snapshot. So I'm talking to him, and, and I said, you know, Patrick, Whatever you do, you know, he's debating different things. He said, do what you're passionate about, okay? And, and then follow that. So he comes back a week later. He's, he's, he's now going to go work for um, Morgan Stanley. And he's going to manage money for high net worth individuals. The guy, Patrick, is 35 years old. And he's really, really good at analytics. I mean, he can drill down and, and he has... He's got the interest rate environment all figured out, I mean, pretty, pretty well, better than some of the other people that are really in charge of that. So I expect he's, he's going to outwork everybody. The part I worry about him is he's not exactly the one that would be most comfortable creating all the business because he gets, he gets excited about what he's doing. You've got to take, you got to convince a lot of people to invest their money with him, and that may be a bit of a challenge. So I got that concern for him, but he'll give it his best, and he'll, He'll work exceptionally hard, and I think he'll make that happen. And he, by the way, he's done work for other investment firms in the past, so he did that. Then he came inside to corporate, and now he's going back out again. So if we get, we can, we can talk a little bit. Another, somebody else asked a question I thought that, that we got here. Sure. Um, talk about like a career path in the Like, what is your passion, like, in your career? What is my passion? Yeah. Like, how does it relate? Um, well, um, I, I'm, I'm pretty good at fixing businesses that are not doing well up. I'm a pretty good fixer-upper, okay? I, uh, uh, when I went to Minneapolis, state regulation was just beginning. And so there was, no, there was no track record of creating these rate cases and the applications. And I, I took that whole area and we, we streamlined it and automated and used computers to create forward-looking test years. 10 or more years ahead of when other groups were able to do that. And that created a lot better process and system. And I resisted twice when they wanted to put me over to the gas, and form a gas utility business unit because I thought there was more work to do. Finally, the president said, I really want you to go here, so I went there. So then I, we, the guy that was the vice president lasted a year, they fired him. And, and so then they put me in there, and, and then the business was, was struggling. We had a new CEO come in. My first meeting with him, he says, I got a business plan here. 
that says that we should sell the gas utility. And he said, what do you think? And I said, I got a plan that I think we can make this business work. And I had the plan in my briefcase. I gave it to him. He said, let me look at that for a couple of days and talk to you. Two days later, he called me in and says, yeah, I'm going to give you the chance to execute that business plan. And we, we, we did that. We had a lot, lot of success in the gas utility. We extended the footprint. We increased the profit five years. We reduced our headcount. But the joy factor of what those people did there, when I, when I left that business to go over and head up NSP Wisconsin, I mean, the people were... I mean, they said it was a hard guy not to work for, which is kind of a compliment if you follow the logic of it, you know. So, I, and then went over to Wisconsin, I, clean, I did some stuff there, and, and Ottertail was in some challenges when I became CEO here. So I'm kind of good, good at getting people to collaborate around things that make a difference and, and work with them so that they willingly want to do it and they give more than I have the authority to ask for. So kind of a collaborator. I've done strategic plans for nonprofits and for other businesses and other things like that because you can get people talking about what's important to them. You draw it out and you put it back on a piece of paper and you prioritize with them and then they know kind of what they want to do. And it's, it's not all that tough so long as people kind of work towards it. So, I mean, I like people. I mean, I probably come through here today, hopefully. That's one of the reasons I'm here. I like to be around people and I, I just think of my state and how good it was for me and I just wanted to be here with you all today. So. Uh, People related jobs. I wouldn't be good on a, I wouldn't be good on an island someplace where I gotta work all by myself because I'd I'd want some of that human contact as well. So retirement's gonna be a bit of a challenge. So I, I was semi-retired before. My wife thought it went pretty well. She's anxious for me to retire again, and I'm gonna go uh, make a difference with my grandkids. Uh, other questions or comments, folks? Anything at all? Well, thank you for, for the time that you spent with me today, and, and thanks for this opportunity. Uh, I wish all of you well in your quest and your journey, and, and, and I, I know you're going to be well prepared.